cigarettes. I think it's going to wander right into my frame. Oh, wow. The wildlife around here is absolutely brilliant. So quiet and tranquil. Yes. Yeah. Probably one of the most peaceful places that, that, I've, that I've ever photographed, really. It, it really is tranquil here. So that's it, you're just, you're just gonna chew that loud, are you? I'm not being loud. I mean, I'm not saying it's loud, but you, but you sound like two shagging amphibians. I don't know how you know what that sounds like. Toads going at it. Oh! You startled me egret with your two second timer. You were shooting an egret? Oh God, I really missed you these last four years. Oh, oh, you know you can turn that off, don't you? Why would I do that? Then how do you know when the the photo's done? Oh. Right, so it's day five or six on the bayou. I can't remember, but uh, who should I bump into? The Ian Plant. <laughs> hey. Photographer extraordinaire, and this is what you've been coming here three years? This is my third year here, yeah. And I think my problem, Ian, is that I've been led to believe by my own ignorance <laughs> that fog is a, is a regular thing here. I, you know, maybe in the winter, it, in the three years I've been down here, I've had good fog, you know, really good fog, maybe three or four times. Yeah, and I've never really had spectacular fog. So what happens a lot of times is you get a little bit of fog, maybe some surface fog on the water, but it's, it's enough to make the scene more interesting, but you're not really catching that beautiful backlighting or anything mm. like that. And the fog often doesn't get high enough to really backlight. So, really good fog, I think I've seen only once. Once in three years. <laughs> and I thought I was gonna get those shots on my very first visit. Now I just feel stupid. <laughs> and honestly, I'm, I'm questioning whether or not I should just leave. Because I really miss me cats. And uh, I know how that feels. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, you, oh, you do, you've got Many cats. cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're very important to us. And then I have a five day drive all the way back to Nova Scotia. Oh, I was complaining about my, my very long one or two day drive, so I'm gonna stop complaining. Well, where do you live, Missouri or somewhere? In <laughs> Minnesota. Minnesota, and it yeah. was an M. How long did that take? Uh, I, I took two days to come down here, but I had to bring my boat. Yeah, so, so you were going slow. Going a little bit slower, yeah. Yeah, five days for me, so. <laughs> well, I'm glad I bumped into you, and I'm definitely not suicidal now that I know about the actual reality of this. <laughs> Definitely not. Well, it's still a beautiful place and you're going to make some beautiful photos, so just uh, embrace what you got. Oh, I'll embrace it, all right. <laughs> well, I'm not going to let that bit of depressing reality ruin my fun. And uh, I found a fairly nice composition. Very, very simple, and very, very pure, and it's all about form and colour. Let me just show you the back of the camera here and I'll explain what I mean. Now, I'm, I'm kneeling amongst all of this stuff uh, really what I'd like to do is sit down, but uh, I don't really want to sit on one of these spiky objects. It's not my kind of thing, you know, no, no judgement if, if it is your kind of thing, but for me... Anyway, about this shot. <laughs> okay, what I've gone for here is this lovely grouping of three trees. Now if I just make this a bit darker, you should be able to see some of that beautiful orange colour up in the canopy which is also reflected in the water there. Then what I've done is I've offset things a little bit so that the, the two that are grouped together are pushed over on the right of the frame. And then on the left of the frame, I've got this skinnier, slightly more shapely tree with some branches that shoot off to the left. And then those reflect beautifully in that water. And I don't know if you can see this, this amount of detail, but in the water we've got all of these fallen needles because we had some rain the other day so it's kind of sad that i don't get to see a perfect reflection the reflection is kind of disturbed by this this litter basically that's in the water and ian was saying that that's not likely to get any better so i might as well just shoot while i can before it gets even worse but i don't know when i do a long exposure i kind of like the streaks that it makes so it's it's not definitely not offensive so it, it's a dead simple composition it's about as basic as it gets but if this first shot of the day turns out to be any good here's this shot
wonderful morning of landscape photography, I'd worked up quite the appetite. Right, let's go get some Texas barbecue oh. for... Oh, hang on. I've left my stinky clobber on the bonnet there to dry. Can you go and grab it for me? Yeah, yeah, the socks, both of them, and then the, the soiled pants there, yeah. Oh, thanks, love. You're a good one, aren't you? Yeah. Right, it's time for a sandy dump. It's been a long time. If you're squeamish, look away now. What can I say? Hard castle of poos. All right, so now it's time for the grey water. Ready? Rinsing down them turds. Going down the pipe. Rinsing out the feasters. Smelling like some shy. Massage in the pipe. Get those poos flowing. Another one of yours stuck there, love. Might need another man to help me lift that one. <laughs> flowing down the feasters. Going down the pipe. I think we're good now. Cleaning up the features. Do you know, I'm always ecstatic when the sunny dump is over. And strangely, it didn't put me off. My appetite for Texas barbecue. I haven't tasted it yet, but <laughs> at first glimpse, it doesn't disappoint. Have a look at this business. Now, I know that you lot love to watch me eat, so <laughs> prepare yourself. Now, of course, like any proper barbecue, I'm going to be chasing this with some Gaviscon, which, you know, weirdly, Texas, everything seems to be bigger in Texas. It's, it's like king size, except for the Gaviscon. It's, it's a small bottle, <laughs> which is strange, because this is a state where you need it the most. But anyway, let me talk you through what we've got here. What have you got here, love? What's going on here? I got some sausage. Smoked sausage? Yeah. yeah. Some brisket? Yeah. Sweet potato fries. Fried okra. Okra. Okay, and I've got uh, the pulled pork, the brisket, some barbecue beans, and some coleslaw. Uh, and of course, uh, we're going to drown this in barbecue sauce. And um, this, Tony's Creole seasoning. Absolutely addictive. Anyway, let's let's dig in. Now, if you're going to go to a proper Texas barbecue, you're going to want to use a lot of barbecue sauce and then a lot more barbecue sauce. So how does it taste? Well, right, let's try this brisket. It's delicious. Oh, God. Mm. Right, let's try these, uh, let's try these beans. Beans are a very important part of barbecue. Got to get it right. Oh. Those are the best barbecue beans I've ever had. Now, this fried okra, the best thing to do with your fried okra is dip it in your beans. Oh. Now the pulled pork. Don't look at me. That was absolutely fantastic, thank you. Absolutely fantastic. The best barbecue beans I have ever had. But I'm very glad that I've got my uh, dessert. If you're watching this video, Gabby Scott, it really is about time that you got in touch because uh, that's some sponsorship dollars I could really do with. And I'm sure you could do with the exposure. It's not like everybody needs a heartburn remedy, is it? Well, it is if they eat there, but <laughs> it was brilliant. Absolutely bloody brilliant. Should we go back for dessert? Yeah, like, well, I can't wait till I'm hungry again, so I'll just go back. I might just make myself vomit <laughs> like the Romans used to do. But oh, lunch tomorrow can't come by quick enough, can it? With lunch taken care of, let's get back to some photography. A really powerful compositional tool is to try and frame an already interesting subject with something that is either as interesting or even more interesting. So, for example, look at this shot here. I've got this nice cluster of three cypress trees. Slight bang in the centre of my frame and that in itself creates a nice composition but what if I move back 10 feet switch focal lengths and then use the same composition but then frame it with these beautiful trees on either side of it so that that grouping is in the middle and this acts as a frame let's see if that works all right so now I've moved back I think I actually moved back five or six feet and I've switched lenses. I've now put on the 55mm prime 
because I had to go wider because now I need to fit in these two trees on either side of that lovely grouping of three to create my bookends, to create my frame. And 55 seems just about perfect for this shot. And as you can see, I don't know if you agree, but for me, this makes a far more interesting shot. It kind of pulls you into the center of the frame and gives it an extra dimension. So that's how it looks with a, a bookend frame. And, and you can also do the same top and bottom, or even better, you can actually frame all around the entire image. But sometimes what I really like to do is just a one-sided partial frame. So it's got almost like what I did there with the bookends, but you just have it on one side. In the shot like this, everything's centralized, everything's slap bang in the middle. But when you can find one side as kind of like a one half of a bookend, then you can take that initial subject and push it off to one edge of the frame. So it's a, a bit more of a, a tilted composition and not so obvious. So I'm gonna walk around a little bit more and see if I can find something to demonstrate that. So here's an example of an offset frame with the framing element pushed off to the left. But I could do the same thing with the frame pushed off to the right. And the deciding factor usually comes down to whichever framing element you think looks best. Right, I found a really tasty example of partial framing or well, let's call it an offset frame. So what I've got is this absolutely gorgeous cypress tree right in my foreground. But beyond it, way off in the distance, is this other cypress tree that's got this beautiful orange canopy. And that's really my subject. And I'm using this one in front of me here as the offset frame. I'll show you the back of the camera and explain a bit better. On the left of the frame, you can see this tree with what I've now learned are called knees, not roots. And then in the background, if I just change the focus, you can see that lovely tree with all that colorful canopy. So admittedly, it's not my best example of offset framing, but you get the idea. day in the swamps, I managed to capture this one last image. Yet another brilliant day in the swamp, but it was thirsty work, so we went to Shane Bloom's cabin for a bevy. I think that the, the taxidermy in this uh, cabin has gone way too far. Uh, taxidermy bald eagle? That's a federal offence. Uh, that's, that's a pigeon. <sighs> Shit, I thought that was a lynx. Turns out it's a bobcat. Um, ugh. Yeah, I think you should have another glass of wine. You know, we need to be careful about the taxidermy because I don't know what this air conditioner deserved to be hunted and hung up on the wall like this, but I prefer to see my air conditioners out in the wild. In the wild? In the wild. I don't get it. There's nothing to get? <laughs> it's just stupid. No. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate it, man. I'm good. Just figured it more space in the morning, you know? Hell yeah, yeah dude. I can't wait to put my camera gear in the kitchen. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. What are these? So What's in here? Thanks, Daddy. What the f is this? Just cheese? <laughs> it's, it's blue cheese. Smell it. I'm good. Smell my cheese. What? Smell my cheese. Blue it's blue cheese. Dude, you just threw it in the bin. What? Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> I knew it was going to be in the garbage and I was so happy someone tried to open and be like. <laughs> what a beautiful moment. And then there's olive and yeah. nuts. <laughs> Olives and nuts. That was a great restaurant. A psychopath. <laughs> So, puts a, a thing of olives and nuts and just leaves it. Exactly. So we ordered this charcuterie board. It was the most bizarre char... Look, Texas has some amazing food. Never come here and buy a charcuterie board. That's for Europe. Mm, Alrighty. Into the trash. Thanks what? for letting us use your garbage. Yeah. Wait, the almonds are so totally fine. 
<laughs> or I guess, oh shit. The reason the almond was so soft is because it kind of like absorbed. It was with the olives. The, yeah. yeah, the. Oh, the, the moist. <laughs> Disgusting. Oh, perhaps delicious. Can I try one before you talk? It's in the bin. No. Well, what are you going to try? An olive or a, or an almond? I didn't mind this. So a soggy almond that's the soggy because of olives. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's nasty. Is it nasty? Y'all ain't coming back here, it's gross. <laughs> but uh, almond stuffed olive? Who could have predicted that? Almond and olive? Oh, I, I, I think an oh, almond sorry. stuffed olive might work. Do you think that was intentional? Like an almond olive? Yeah, it's not bad. Those yeah. are done, but the blue cheese is kind of a weird thing. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah. You don't want to. Y'all look crazy. It was the Did you say y'all? Dude, we've been here for four days. <laughs> I like to use y'all. I'm going to use it forever more. I, I use y'all back at home. Do I don't you? know. If, yeah. Don't you think it'd be rude at home, though? Why would it be rude? You all what, seem what really are... proper in that part of the world. Proper. Uh, I don't know. San Francisco and all. What? What? <laughs> what? What accent is that? I'm making it up. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you should go back to your Canadian accent. Oh. Oh, I don't know. Maybe she should uh, go back to speaking like she's from Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that oh. Canadian, eh? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to do Canada. I think you should be sorry for that one, eh? Oh, yeah. That was a bad accent, eh? Oh, I don't know. That, that's, that's Minnesota. Whatever. Same <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> and I'm Canadian too. Are you? I am Canadian. I am Canadian. From where? Uh, Quebec City. Oh, I knew it. Yeah. That's why he's so rude. It's my heritage, right? I don't know if it's that easy. I think it's quite tricky. So I'm oh, so for <laughs> <laughs> Just shut up. You're agitating me, Egret. You're Just making me egritated. <laughs> <laughs> do triceratops eat, do they eat trees? It sounds like a Tyrannosaurus Rex eating an elephant. I don't think that's, that. that's not historically accurate. No, I think you're right. Yeah, that's true, there was no elephants. Man, what about a woolly mammoth? I'm not saying you're a loud chewer, but it, it does sound like an aggressive lumberjack having a day off. You're gonna, you're gonna eat the whole thing? But if an aggressive lumberjack is having a day off, they wouldn't be lumberjacking. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know how you know what that sounds like. Toads going at it. Two toads, maybe, all, maybe an orgy of toads. <laughs>